Europa Park is one of the best theme parks in the entire world. Located in Rust, Germany, this European themed amusement park is extremely immersive, and the park complements this wonderful theming with 13 different roller coasters that add in some thrills. Europa Park has one of the deepest ride lineups in the world with dozens of attractions for all ages. So in this video, I will rank the park's top 25 best rides and attractions. Starting off this list at number 25 is Schweizer Bobbin. The prototype mock bobsled claimed a spot on my top 25 worst roller coasters list earlier this year, but I got a much better ride in this coaster in 2021. The key is to lean forwards. The slatted trough leads to rattling throughout, but this short coaster does have a fun series of turns and helixes, a few of which have mild sliding and okay force. Number 24, Euro Tower. This intimate observation tower stands 249 feet, or 79 meters tall, and it gives a stunning view of Europa Park. From the aerial views of the coasters to the park's lush landscaping, it's incredible to see this theme park from such a unique angle, and this one has a long cycle too. Number 23, Matterhorn Blitz. This mock wild mouse coaster is rather slow, but it has two things going for it. One, the elevator lift at the start is a neat way to begin. Two, this is the large park model with a sizable drop at the start that has some good zip. I wish the rest of the layout had more laterals, but the start does differentiate it from most wild mice coasters. Number 22, Columbus Jolly. This is a weird enclosed Himalaya style attraction. It's a smaller mock Himalaya with decent speed and laterals, but there are two things that make it stand out. One, the theming. This one is accompanied by screen and light effects to make the ride feel way faster than it actually is. Two, the wheel. Riders can spin a wheel on their car to face forwards, backwards, or sideways throughout the experience. This really breaks up the monotony of this common flat ride. Number 21, Pegasus. This mock family coaster is better than it looks. If you ride in the back car, the first drop and another drop midway through the ride will actually give some faint airtime, And then the helixes are decently forceful too. Add in a glass smooth ride experience and you have a pleasant ride for budding coaster enthusiasts and adults alike. Number 20, Fluke der Cassandra. This mock madhouse is one of the best of the genre. The benches have more movement than you may expect and when paired with the visual effects, your mind will believe you're actually inverting. And there are a few bonus effects too that I don't want to spoil here that will routinely make people jump. Number 19, Schlittenfart Schneeflockchen. This is a short but cute dark ride in the Russian section of the park. This ride feels like it's a small world crossed with Frozen Ever After. You have a series of dolls telling the story of a snow princess. The set quality is simpler than the park's other dark rides, but it's paired with a catchy song. Number 18, Piccolo Mundo. This Italian themed dark ride tells the story of the country's history, love, and food. The switch between concepts is abrupt, but enjoyable. It's another short dark ride, but it has some quirky and charming sets. Number 17, Football Scooter. This is a very unique set of bumper cars. The cars have decent speed and power but what makes it special is the fact you can actually play soccer on board. There are two different colored cars, each representing a team, and a supersized exercise ball in the arena. The teams need to work together to push the ball into the respective goal on each end. It's chaos like kindergarten soccer. It's hard, but pure fun. Number 16, Atlantica Super Splash. The newer of the two mock water coasters at this park is basically a glorified shoot the shoots ride. The turnaround is plussed by some turntables and a short but effective backwards drop, but the highlight is the final plunge. It's fairly tall for a water ride at nearly 100 feet or 30 meters tall. The drop has some okay zip to it, and then you have a decent speed hill afterwards with some weightlessness and then a refreshing final splash. And then watch out for those mischievous dolphins, they may spray you. Number 15, Poseidon. The older of the two mock water coasters is the better ride in my opinion. This one has more coaster elements to it. 
the first half has a little bit of a shake, but you get some positive G's on a few of the turns. Then the final drop is very good. Its parabolic profiling results in some airtime. The speed hill doesn't do as much in this one like Atlantica Super Splash, but the final splash is equally as refreshing. Number 14, Snorri Torn. This is really unique how Europa Park tied the story of their new indoor water park in Rulantica to the theme park. The journey to this underwater place is told in the detailed queue line and on the ride itself. The ride is more screen reliant than the park's other dark rides, but it gives some variety and the visuals are crisp and the entire ride is paired to a super catchy song. And then there's also a very unique simulator bit towards the end of the ride that few dark rides feature for variety. Number 13, Aventura Atlantis. This shooting dark ride is pretty straightforward, but it has hundreds of targets. The sets are a mix of cutouts and figures, but the best visuals are the cool looking dragons in my opinion. Number 12, Madame Frudenreich Curiosities. The renovation to this dinosaur dark ride elevated this ride from a complete bore to a pleasant experience. The large dinosaurs are now performing some cartoony and goofy tasks throughout, which admittedly brought a smile to my face. And then there's an impressive animatronic of the woman herself towards the end of the ride. Number 11, Tirolur Wild Wasserbahn. This log flume has two fairly fun drops and a very soaking splash. But what stands out most to me is the extended indoor section in the mine. The theming is pretty good, and you also get some cool interactions with the powered coaster. Number 10, Fjord Rafting. This is a very fun River Rapids ride. The course is very well landscaped and has some solid theming to it at points. And those visuals are accompanied by several water effects. You have some bouncy rapids thanks to wave machines, and then some lesser water effects that will lightly sprinkle or miss the rafts. Number 9, Geisterschloss. This ride gives vibes of both Disney's Haunted Mansion and the one at Knobles. This one has the expansive sets of Disney's Haunted Mansion and a few eerily reminiscent scenes, but there are also some morbid scenes scattered in and more jump scares like the one found at Knobles. It's the park's best classic dark ride in my opinion. Number 8, Volatarium. This flying theater is a joy. The queue line has some wondrous theming and then the ride itself has beautiful visuals of high-profile locations around the world. These flying theaters are becoming more common, but this is among the best of the genre. Number 7, Eurosat. Rebuilt and reborn for the 2018 season, this indoor mock coaster is better than ever. The old version was rather shaky, but the new one is glass smooth. There are a few blacklit visuals during the ride, and a risque series of images for the finale, but the ride's biggest strength is the hidden layout. You have a series of whippy drops and decently forceful turns taken in mostly complete darkness, so they will catch you off guard each ride. Number 6, Arthur. This hybrid dark ride and coaster is the complete package. It's part of a highly immersive indoor section, and the coaster tells the story of Arthur and the Invisibles. The dark ride portion has a mix of screens and physical sets, with the highlight being this comical parody of Las Vegas. Then you have some coaster sections. You have the tamer and visually stunning section flying above the indoor part, and then you have the mildly forceful twists outdoors. Number 5, Euromir. The original mock spinning coaster is a very bizarre ride. The ride begins with essentially a dance party you have this long spiral lift hill to a crazy techno beat. Then you have this elevated outdoor section around these glass towers that's pretty disorienting because the vehicles are spinning. Then you dive into a forceful layout. The vehicle rotation is locked for this part of the ride, but it's still quite thrilling. The turns and helixes pull some shockingly strong positive Gs, and they're particularly dizzying if you experience them going backwards. Number 4. Piraten in Batavia. Rebuilt after a large fire, this Pirates of the Caribbean knockoff may actually be better than the original. It has the familiar drop at the start, but the rest of the ride is even more technologically stunning. You have these massive sets loaded with pirate animatronics and projection mapping, 
The amount of detail is overwhelming, and this is easily the park's best dark ride. Number 3. Wodan Timber Coaster This great coaster's international creation is the park's lone wooden coaster, and it's great. Wodan has fantastic pacing. I love the large first drop filled with floater airtime, and the rest of the layout is a blitz of drawn out floater airtime and quicker, more abrupt pops of airtime. The ride also has plenty of near misses between the wooden support structure and all those tunnels, which only enhances this coaster's sense of speed. Number 2. Blue Fire The prototype mock launch coaster is a very well rounded coaster. The initial launch has some decent kick to it, unlike the future mock launches. And then the main layout has a few spots of floater airtime, plus hang time filled inversions. And that all leads up to the final barrel roll, which offers insane whip, laterals, and hang time all in one element. Add in some great landscaping around the attraction, theming during the first launch, and super comfortable trains, and you have a winner. And coming in at number one is Silver Star. The top ride at what essentially is the mock show floor is actually from another European manufacturer. This Balger and Mabillard Hypercoaster is one of the company's best. The first half has strong and sustained floater airtime throughout the entire train, and then the second half is fantastic too. You have two drops that give strong flagector or weak ejector airtime depending on your perspective, a decently forceful helix, another strong bunny hill filled with floater airtime, and a snappy S-bend. Silver Star is an airtime machine, and that's why it's my favorite ride at Europa Park. So those are my top 25 favorite rides and attractions at Europa Park. What are your favorite rides at this German theme park? I would love to hear what you think about any of the rides down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.